Hey everyone, Jeff here from TheRevitKid.com. Today is a really quick and fun tutorial in Dynamo. So recently I was tasked with modeling a Unitarian church uh, here in Connecticut. Uh, the church is pretty cool. Um, it's designed by Victor Lundy um, and it's got this crazy sweeping um, geometric roof. And uh, the big challenge beyond just modeling the actual roof itself um, is modeling exposed beams that follow that roof. Um, <clears throat> so what I did is I created a Dynamo script that, um, that takes a path which is drawn by simple lines and it projects onto the roof and it draws beams on a complex surface. So this can be super useful I'm sure for you guys um, in any type of um, form that you're creating, not just a roof, but um, being able to, to make beams follow complex surfaces um, is pretty powerful. And what you'll see in this tutorial is that it's actually really, really simple to do in Dynamo. Before we jump into the tutorial, I wanted to mention a couple things. Um, as some of you may know, DIY Dynamo Day, um, which is the first ever in-person Dynamo training that I'm doing, is actually open for enrollment now. Um, the spaces are limited, so if you're interested in joining me here in Connecticut um, for a full day training on Dynamo, or maybe you're in the local, maybe you're in the area, maybe you're in Connecticut, Massachusetts, New England, uh, you name it, um, definitely check out the link below. It's DIYDynamoDay.com. Um, um, again, space is limited, so make sure you get uh, get in if you're really interested. Um, DIY Dynamo, the online course, is going to be open for enrollment um, in a couple weeks on December 2nd. So if you're interested in that, uh, there's also a link down down below for that, which is just DIYDynamo.com. Um, you can s fill out a form and you'll get... Um, You'll be the first to notified when it goes on sale, um, and usually there's a, a little bit of a discount for those of you who, who want to uh, be notified early. And last but not least, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you like and subscribe below. Um, it helps get more recognition um, to the site. So now let's jump into the tutorial, and I'll show you how to make uh, beams follow complex surfaces. Alrighty, so here's the project. This is the uh, Unitarian Church that I mentioned in the intro. Um, this is the final model, so as you can see, um, there's beams in here with these, these cool little ties across. Um, I have uh, a couple exploded views that sort of show some of the stuff going on in there. You can see here's the beams that were following the surface. But what I wanted to do before we jump, what I wanted to do before we jumped right into the tutorial is just run through the script to show you, show you how it works. So you can see the roof is kind of interesting. It's... Um, it's a folded form, so it's kind of taking just a flat roof and, and, and twisting it. But um, as you'll notice, there's sort of these these kind of bends on the side, so it's it's unfortunately not extremely simple to create. It took quite a bit of, of manipulating. Um, so the roof you're seeing here is actually a in-place mass. So I created a surface in place, and then I just did a roof by face. And so that's an actual Revit roof. Actually, I think I'm using a wall here, um, mainly because of the way I was hosting it. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, sometimes when you do roof by face or wall by face, um, depending on how vertical or horizontal the element is, Revit does some funky things. So uh, unfortunately here I ended up having to use a, a wall um, family, but um, you can make the construction of it a roof. Um, so that's beyond the, the tutorial and uh, we need to talk about the qualms of using roof or walls by face. But um, what I wanted to show you is notice how I have these model lines on the bottom. These model lines are actually going to be the paths of our beams. And if I look straight down on them, uh, you'll notice, go wireframe, you'll notice they actually run through this through the surface. So you want them to extend beyond the, the surface that you're, you're, um, you're drafting on or modeling on, I should say. Okay, so now if I open up Dynamo, Here's the script here. It's extremely simple. The first thing you do is you select the face. So let me just make this so you guys can see it well. Okay, so I'm gonna select the face, which is actually gonna be the underside of my roof. So I just selected that there. And then I'm gonna select the model elements, which are actually my paths. So that's gonna be my model line. So I'm gonna set up my view so I make it really easy to select. I'm gonna select my model elements and there we go, now we have our model elements selected. And then I'll run through each of these in, in a minute, but what you'll notice is I also can set my structural framing types. So just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna leave it as a, a 12 by 26. Um, the actual project is a, um, is a wooden beam, but um, you, you, get the, you get the picture here. 
Um, so W12 by 26, I'm gonna, I've already selected my stuff, and then I'm gonna click run. Now that my run is complete, what you'll notice is I have beams following my surface. Let me move Dynamo here so you guys can see it. See these beams here? They're actually following the surface exactly how I need them to. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so let's talk about how to make this. So let me undo the Dynamo script so we can use that when we're testing. Okay, perfect. And let's jump into Dynamo. Okay, so I'm gonna start by start from scratch. And so I'm actually using manual selections here. I'm selecting the face manually and I'm selecting the model elements manually. Um, if you wanted to, you can get into different more complex ways to select things. But for the sake of what this project was and probably what you'd be using this for, it's okay to just make um, a manual selection happen. Okay, so I'm gonna start fresh. And so, as I mentioned, the first things we need to do is we need to select our face and then we need to select our lines, which is essentially going to be our paths. Okay, so for that, we need two. First, I'm going to switch this from automatic to manual. Um, by default, Dynamo's runs at automatic for some God only knows reason. Um, but you almost always want to flip it to manual right away. I'm not really sure why that's not the default, but it is what it is. What's going to happen if you leave it on automatic is that the thing is just going to keep running. So as you add nodes, it's going to keep running and you're going to get errors and all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to search and I'm going to search for select face. And I'm going to add a select face node. Then I'm going to search again and I'm going to look for select model elements. And you want to make sure it's select model elements with an S and not element. Obviously, we want to select more than one line. So we're going to need the plural version of that node. So there's our first two nodes. Okay, these are going to be the inputs that we create. The rest of it, pretty straightforward. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to take our, our lines and we're going to convert them to what Dynamo calls curves, which are essentially just lines inside of Dynamo's um, Dynamo inside of Dynamo itself. Um, and that's how it recognizes lines and, and per, um, perimeters and so on and so forth. So it's uh, it's kind of redundant, but the reality is. Um, we need to do this in order for Dynamo to read those. Um, so what we do here is element dot curves. And you can see the input matches, which is beautiful in Dynamo and input matches, you're connecting elements to elements. So now what this is doing is it's actually going to be converting our lines to curves with, within the Dynamo space. Um, so what I'm actually going to do just because I think it'll be fun for, for learning is I'm going to select my lines. Okay. Notice how I just selected them here, I selected them there. And then I'm gonna run this. And it yelled at me a little bit uh, because I didn't select any surface yet. But if I zoom out in my 3D space, you'll notice that those lines are now in Dynamo space. So Control B actually gets you between um, your nodes and your 3D space or this button up here, there's a, a toggle. Um, so there's a warning because I didn't select any faces yet. But what you'll notice is that now in my Dynamo script, I actually already have my lines. So now I've loaded those into my Dynamo script. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to we need to project these lines onto our surface. Okay. So that's how Dynamo does it. It takes these lines and it projects them up, down, sideways, whatever we want them to do, and it's actually going to project them onto our surface. Okay. So the node that we do that with is called surface dot project <clears throat> input onto so surface dot project input onto so it sounds a little complicated but what I'll show you graphically is it's actually pretty simple so we have three inputs we're going to input a surface which is actually only going to be one face of our roof um, because we only need a single surface um, the geometry to project, which is going to be our lines, right? Because we want to project our lines up, or in this case, we're going up. Sometimes you might want to project down, depending on where it is. Um, these lines are going to be below our roof, right? And then the, the dire direction to project. And so this is just telling um, Dynamo, do I want to take these lines that we selected and project them up? Do I want to project them down? Do I want to project them left? Do I want to project them white to the right, etc. Okay, so let's plug a couple of these things in here. Surface to surface, super simple there. Our geometry to project is actually going to be our curves, which essentially is our model lines, right? And then last but not least, we need a project direction. And so um, when you think about this, 
as far as direction, you may say to yourself, I want it to go up. Um, as you guys know, in most 3D software, including Revit, up is usually Z. Uh, sometimes it's Y, but in Revit, it's Z, the Z, the Z axis. Unfortunately, you can't just type the letter Z and go in here. Um, what you'll notice is that the surface dot project input onto node is looking for a vector input. See that right there? It says vector. And so what we need to do is we actually need to place a node that tells Dynamo what vector uh, direction to use. So I know I need to project upwards. And so I need to figure out exactly how to do that. So if I search the word vector, um, there's a few things here. It says get the Z component of a vector um, by coordinates. There's a few things that come up, but it's not necessarily what I want. The Z component of the vector doesn't work because our lines are drawn um, horizontally, right? But if I keep searching some more and I say dot Z, for example, um, you could see there's actually these three um, categories that come up and they're called X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. And so what this does is it actually, um, it gets the canonical, <laughs> um, it's a mathematical term, it's a geometry term, if you guys took geometry, I'm not going to get into it right here, but just know what's happening here is that it's actually going to be taking whatever, whatever vector, or, I'm sorry, whatever curves you take, and it's going to project them in the direction of the axis you're telling it to. So if we want it to go horizontally, for example, in one direction, we would use Y. If we wanted to go horizontally in the other direction, we might use the X. We know we want it to go up. So what this is going to do is actually going to take that curve and it's going to project it up until it hits a surface. Okay, so I'm just going to click vector dot Z axis is the node. And I'm going to plug that into the direction. Okay, now let me select my surface and I'm going to run this as we go through it. So I'm going to select my face. I'm clicking my face. So now I have a surface input, which is select face and model elements. Oops, I press select there. So now if I run this, You'll notice in Dynamo, check this out, our surface is there, which is pretty awesome. Dynamo doesn't feel like orbiting for me today. Our surface is there, <clears throat> and our lines are there. So now our elements, our geometry exists in Dynamo, which is pretty sweet. And it's hard to see right here, but um, it is it is projecting the lines. But once we place the beams, you'll actually see those better. So. The output of this, as you'll notice, is a list. And it's actually going to be our geometry, which is our single line right here. The one thing that we have to do here is, um, and you'll notice as we run through it, I'm not going to get into list lacing in this tutorial. Um, if you're really interested in learning list lacing and managing lists, I definitely, definitely suggest you check out DIY Dynamo when um, the course opens, whether you come see me in person in Hartford in January or you, um, you enroll in the online class because I have a great little um, chapter on list lacing. And I, I'd like to say I, I, I think I've simplified it pretty well for, for folks. Um, other students have, have mentioned that they're surprised that such a complex thing um, was easy to follow. So I'm not going to get into that here because it's an entire chapter. But what's happening here is it's only showing one result. Okay. Um, so by default, Dynamo likes to try and figure out what kind of listing you want to use when you have multiple things. Um, I could tell you <clears throat> that for this one, what we're going to want to do is actually going to want to do longest. And if we run it again, you'll notice now we're actually getting multiple results. What was happening there is we were actually only getting the first curve or the first um, path. But now, as you'll notice, as I switch it to longest, we have our lines actually projected onto our surface. So for the time being, just understand that for this one and for most of your Dynamo scripts, you can always just kind of mess around with list lacing until it works. But if you really want to understand what's happening in list lacing, definitely check out my course DIY Dynamo. All right. So we have our, our, our curves loaded in. We have our surface in there. We've actually drawn lines now. We've drawn geometry, which is what you see on these surfaces um, that we want our beams to follow. So now we just have one more step, which is really simple. It's placing our beams. And so Dynamo, and this is all out of the box, Dynamo has a node called structural framing beam by curve. So if I click this, what does that mean? Remember, curves are lines in Dynamo. So if we're placing a beam by curve, we're just placing a beam by a line. And so that line could be anything. It could be a spline. It could be funky. It could be whatever. And guess what? We have lines now, right? If we were to do um, just the original model lines, they would just be these flat beams on the floor. But we actually have these new lines we created by projecting onto our surface. So pretty simple. What do we think our curves are going to be? 
that's going to be the lines that we created from our projection, which is this node here, right? And notice actually, as I'm selecting these nodes, they highlight in Dynamo to tell you what it is. So if I select this face, it's highlighting it. If I select these um, model elements down on the bottom, the curves, they're blue. If I select the surface projected onto, it's showing me these. So it gives you a nice visual to, to explain um, exactly what Dynamo is doing when it comes to geometry, okay? So now there's just two more inputs that we need, level. And so level's a little bit, um, um, I don't want to say not important, but um, you have to remember that we're projecting to the surface. So you want to choose a level that makes sense for things like maybe scheduling or certain plans. Um, but those are just the level it's hosted to. Obviously, the beam itself is going to exist where those lines are drawn. Um, so I would say, you know, whatever makes sense for your project. But um, what you're going to need is you're actually going to need a level node. So levels is a node. And you can select your levels from project. So I'm just going to pick basement for this one. Doesn't really make much of a difference. Like I said, I'm not scheduling this. If, if you were scheduling it or something, maybe you have a roof, you want it to be part of a roof. That's fine. Doesn't really make a difference to where the geometry is. And last but not least, we need a structural framing type. So that's our input. So let's search to see if Dynamo has a node for that. Structural framing types. Doesn't want to do it because I spelled the word structural wrong. Types, there we go. Structural framing types. So initially, you might think I want to go to family types. And um, it unfortunately doesn't work that way because this, this node is looking for a structural framing type as the input um, for this particular node. If you wanted to take the same process and utilize it for maybe an adaptive component or some other type, then you would be using a different placement node and you might be able to use other inputs. For now, we're going strictly with structural beams. So we're using a structural framing type. And I'm going to select whatever's in the project. I'm going to use that W12 by 26. Obviously, you need to load in um, a family that is going to work for you um, before you do it. Um, I'm going to actually, you know, <clears throat> I think the original project was like a 10 by 20 or something timber frame. And I'm going to plug that in here. Okay. So before I run it again, let's see what we did. First, we selected our lines, which is going to tell us the path the beams are going to take. We converted them to curves, which are essentially lines that exist in Dynamo. Then we selected our face of our object, which is our funky roof, right? And we use this um, project onto surface node to take our lines, take our face, and create new lines, which are these blue lines here, following our surface. Now that we have these new curves, which are these new lines, we can do a simple structural beam by curve, and we can place whatever beam type we want along the surface. Okay, so let's click run. And the run completed, that was nice and fast. And as you can see, if I highlight my roof, we've got our beams following our surface here. The one thing you'll notice, which is a little funky, is um, Dynamo will sometimes try and figure out what direction the um, cross section wants to be. Notice this was negative 180. Um, if I flip this to zero, they should flip back around. Um, and then if you really need to tweak those, you can tweak those. But the cross sectional rotation, um, when you get vertical it starts doing funny things but if I let me type section here there we go now there it is awesome so that's it super simple but extremely powerful um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial like I said in the beginning if you did please subscribe below tell tell everyone about it and um, and I hope you guys keep continuing on with your uh, your dynamo journeys I'll uh, talk to you everyone later